I want you to hit me as hard as you can. It's rare to see a film franchise get better and more popular as it goes along, but seven movies in, the Fast and Furious franchise has done exactly that with its newest installment, Furious 7. And even with the tragic death of co-star Paul Walker, this franchise has no sign of slowing down its wheels anytime soon, with over $2 billion worth of box office and counting. So who can blame another studio for trying to create their own potential franchise of gleefully dumb car racing movies? For example, DreamWorks tried dipping their toes in the water with last year's Need for Speed, based on the immensely popular video game series from Electronic Arts, even though it's a series of racing games with little emphasis on character or plot. I mean, by that logic, Ron Howard's Rush could be an adaptation of Pole Position. But even though video game movies have an abysmal track record, did this flick beat those odds and garner enough critical acclaim or financial success to prove a worthy competitor to the bald, shiny throne of Vin Diesel? Well, we're talking about it on this show, so I'll give you a hint. But hey, let's give this movie a chance anyway, seeing as it stars Aaron Paul in his first attempt at a big role after his enormous success on AMC's Breaking Bad. Here he ditches the hazmat suit for a grease-stained work shirt as Toby, the operator of a garage in small town New York, who with the help of his crew races his muscle cars in drag races during the night. At one of these races, he runs into his old pal Dino, played by Dominic Cooper, who has hit the big time and is engaged to the sister of his buddy Pete, played by Dakota Johnson, proving she had a taste for evil douchebag millionaires long before she landed the role in Fifty Shades of Grey. Despite some unsettled beefs between the two, Toby agrees to work on an unfinished Mustang for Dino in order to save his garage from foreclosure. But old wounds are soon reopened, and Dino challenges Toby and Pete to a race. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely one of these men is going to die in this race, as this is clearly the dramatic peak of the plot. And only one of them is ninth build in the cast and the youngest member of Aaron Paul's crew. So... So Dino leaves the scene of the crime, Toby gets blamed for Paul's death, and he re-emerges from jail two years later, ready to wreak his revenge on Dino by going up against him in the De Leon, a street race streamed online by racing enthusiast Michael Keaton. And I would make a joke that his role here is what lost him the Best Actor Oscar for Birdman this year, but considering he lost to the co-star of Jupiter Ascending, I just, I don't know. Plus, Keaton's by far the best thing about this movie, as he's allowed to just sit in one room for the whole movie with a shitload of caffeine in him and say whatever the hell he wants. Smell motor oil all swirling together out there. We got supernatural mustangs, we got personal vendettas. I have no idea where this is going. I just know I like it. I like it a lot. But it's not hard to stand out in this movie, since there's not really that much to like about our main character or his crew, seeing as they spend the whole movie recklessly endangering the lives of other drivers on the road, just so Jesse Pinkman could have a dick measuring contest with Tony Stark's dad. Not to mention, they also strip naked in the middle of office buildings, sexually harass women, and refuel their vehicles while they're still driving. All of which might be forgivable if our characters had a good reason or gained our sympathy. Hell, the cast of the Fast and the Furious movies are able to get away with dumb reckless shit because we've had seven movies to get used to it and like those characters. But the cast of Need for Speed only have one movie, and it's not a very good one. It's just a joyless sludge through cliché after cliché without doing anything truly fun or new with any of them. And whatever joy comes from watching it comes from the town of the cast. Aside from Keaton, Imogen Poots has a decent amount of romantic charisma alongside Aaron Paul, who is himself a pretty good lead, even though his idea of a hot rodding tough guy comes off as a bad James Dean impression at times. And there's something about his voice which makes every other line he says sound like he's coming on to you. Where is he? Oh, he's not coming. Bruh. But at 130 minutes long, Need for Speed doesn't do anything to merit that running time, and certainly doesn't do anything that other movies haven't already done better. So you're better off keeping this one in the junkyard. Don't worry, Aaron Paul, you'll get that big role after Breaking Bad sooner or later. Hey, I hear Ridley Scott is doing a new movie about the Ten Commandments. Oh, sign up for that one, pal. That's gonna be a runaway hit. <laughs> So...
sorry. Awfully Good Movies wants to remind you, don't drink and drive. But please do plenty of drinking to help you play the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time the movie switches to a first person view. Wow, it's just like I'm playing the games and watching some god awful cutscene that I can't skip through. The characters talk to each other over webcam, which begs the question, what mechanics use high-tech webcam equipment in their garage, let alone install it in their cars? The most high-tech thing I've seen in a mechanics garage is that wireless radio that's always tuned to the classic rock station. The movie has another slow-mo car crash, because the only thing worse than getting into a car crash is getting into one in slow motion. Oh god, it hurts twice as much! and take a double shot when you hear one of the drivers is named Gooch. Row 2 is the Gooch in a Selene S7. How much you want to bet that guy got the nickname Gooch because he thought it was cool, but got really pissed off after he saw Jackass the movie? In case you didn't know what the Gooch is, the Gooch is the spot between your balls and butthole. God and on the nudie watch, with a PG-13 rating, you're getting no topless or bottomless action from Imogen Poots in this movie. But I forgive her, because she's cute, and her last name is Poots, and that allows me to make a Rocco's Modern Life reference. Little Poots! Little Poots! <laughs> Not the little Poots! On the enjoyable discontinuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Need for Speed runs out of gas several miles before the finish line and only sputters along to a 4 out of 10. I know I feel the need, the need for going to rewatch one of the Fast and Furious movies instead. I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and we would like to dedicate this episode in loving memory of one of the many lives lost during the course of this movie. The Gooch in the Sling has been totally taken out. I can't believe what I'm saying. We will miss you, Gooch. Your stupid name gave laughter to all. Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you though.